everybody surrounding it's it. It's about nuance, precision. Whoa! That's Hearthstone. Yes, it is. Hunter versus Druid is our game number one, and this is one of those classic battles where, well, <laughs> just when I was about to say it's a classic battle of uh, aggression versus uh, versus defense. That is a Wild Walker. Yeah, Wild, Wild Walker is uh, one of those cards that um, I experimented with right when the uh, Grand Tournament came out, and I couldn't quite find a way to make this card tick in a way that I was 100% satisfied with it. At times, this card can give you a tremendous boost to the board. Mm -hmm. The problem with it is you don't have a lot of super early game beasts that are in Druid. The beasts that you have in Druid are, are sort of towards the more the four and five mana cost section. Um, in Hunter, they have Animal Companion, they have Web Spinner, they have really great tools to make sure that they can get affected to Houndmaster. Plus, Houndmaster is also providing an offensive measure yeah. to go along with it. So. Uh, Wild Walker, I think that because it's in Druid, Druid is still very powerful at the moment. They probably just wanted something a little bit weaker on the on the beast side of pushing. Um, but either way, that that's a super interesting card, and I'm curious to see exactly what they have paired with this. Yeah, we haven't seen any beasts thus far that really stand out. Due to the Claw, uh, that's a normal one. A Savage Combatant even can be a normal one. Yeah. Uh, Plus three health onto a, onto a big beast can certainly turn that into a very, very difficult to deal with minion. I mean, they're already pretty actually. difficult to deal with. Uh, you tack an extra three health onto him, suddenly you're looking at something uh, like a very daunting minion. Yeah, a 4 9 2 to the claw. Even a savage combatant. I think, <laughs> yeah. I think this is maybe just be thrown in here to help supplement these minions. You know, have their, have their sure. sights set yeah. on uh, on sort of this mid game and try to tackle it with just pure efficiency. Yeah. And. This is a very aggressive hunter. I guess we haven't really talked about George Mason's deck. They're running him uh, Seems to be a face hunter. Um, Glaive Zuka is a, and Leopardome are dead giveaways for that. Yeah. Well, th here's the other thing about it too, though, is I know Weva likes to play mid range strategies. Um, Leopardome certainly a card that's just good in Hunter. Applies some pressure, gets the early game rolling, helps you scale into your mid game. Yeah. Uh, I'd be very surprised if they didn't have something towards the six mana slot to really supplement this early pressure. Mm -hmm. But so far, they have been disrupted, and their hand already contains two copies of Unleash the Hounds, a card that you either want to couple with Knife Juggler or that you want to use versus decks that are trying to flood the board. Mm -hmm. Druid is kind of doing the opposite of that. They want to rely on one or two very powerful minions to get the job done. And so Argent Horse Rider uh, could potentially help them supplement this position. But for the moment, they're going to have to just tank some damage to that Glaive Zuka, put a Haunted Creeper on board, and hope for the best. And I can guarantee you they are not expecting Wild Walker to buff this Savage Combatant right back up. Yeah, they were thinking that this guy was going to get contested, but that's not going to be the case whatsoever. Uh, the thing is, how do you go about it, though? Uh, it's a little bit tough. You, they might even think about holding on to it for a turn, or they can just dome it. Yeah, I think I think you play this Wild Walker and point it straight upstairs. You have seven points of damage. You have nine points of minions on the board that are kind of difficult to deal with at the moment, most given that you're just facing a Haunted Creeper. Most likely an explosive trap, though. Yeah, that's true. They are facing a trap at the moment. Uh, so they are going to check to see what this is first. I don't mind trading in the Aspirant in a situation like this, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't see a way that this, this Savage Combatant is not pointed at the face right now. It's 20% of their overall health. Yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty much the news right there. It is super unlikely it's anything other than Explosive Trap right now. Yeah. So there's the news for them. Wild Walker really pulling some weight in this game. Yeah, keeping that Savage Combatant alive is a huge deal because that's going to represent a lot of damage. Yeah, and that the Argent Horse Rider did give me the, the suspicion that this was Face Hunter, but that Arcane Golem really seals it. That was a great call from you. Yeah. And George uh, Mason, really no options. I think they have it's to It's a just, rough hand. It's yeah. a rough hand. You know, all of their options pretty much do the same thing. We have five mana and four three drops. It's a little rough. And yeah. here's gonna... the thing about it: this deck, typically in these kinds of situations, yeah, it doesn't fret too much. It just kind of ignores what's going on, on the board and points the damage upstairs. But in a situation like this, there's a, a two cost beast. Another beast. Yeah, that it actually... also has flexibility as well. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense in this build. So there's some one ones. Swipe is upstairs, but this does activate those unleash the hounds now. You know, they were looking for this power overwhelming turn next turn and, and to push for lethal, but George Mason going to be able to offset this and maybe, just maybe, take advantage of this. It's going to be hard, though, because they're at 12 health right now. They will be able to clear the board and have quite a few pounds. But there's another swipe. Yeah, the big picture here, though, is that Boston isn't going to be playing uh, a really significant minion this turn. 
Um, but swipe and well now now they also have driven the saber. That guy becomes a beast too. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he transforms into a beast. When you search him up, it actually doesn't. He's either, not a beast outright. He either turns into a a lion thing. Yeah, it's like it's, it's like, like a cat. It turns it's it's like it's a feral druid one way or the other. And it's either yeah. one that's charging at your face, so he's a little bit more vulnerable. Uh, is a 2-1 instead, or he kind of prowls around and looks for a better place to strike. Yeah. As a result, he's a little bit tougher, so 3-2. And when he charges, he looks like a weird lion. It's true. So there's the damage from George Mason. You know, Boston's still not out of the water on this one just yet. They don't have the damage to close this one out right away. Three, four, five, six, seven. That's one point of damage off lethal Yikes. at the moment. And they're facing down six, plus two from hero power. Yeah, I think they're going to have to trade. Uh, they might even trade in just Dr. Boom. Dr. Boom would put the clock on your opponent. They would have to close the game next turn. Yeah, with just one card in their hand, four damage staring at you on board, they'd have to draw into seven damage with two cards and no beast. Yeah. They've already been through two unleashes, so there's no way. One of those cards is a quick shot, so they could have kill command, quick shot, quick shot. We're just charge minions. Either. No, even a kill command, quick shot, quick shot, they wouldn't have enough damage. Well, here we go. It. George Mason's going to have to end the game this turn. Well, we're looking at a victory for Boston University. That is two points of damage. That's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They need two more points of damage from this quick shot draw. Wow. In Boston. Let's see what it's going to be. Look at those emotions. They're tense right now. It has to be for three minutes. That's it. Eagle Horn Bow will close this game out. This deck is stuffed to the brim with ways to deal damage for three or less mana. And George yeah. Mason high fives all around. And there's that, hey, here, yeah, here we got a Dr. Boom too. Yeah, there's your, here's a Dr. Boom for you. <laughs>